Hi, it's Mark from Safrock Studios here. I'm gonna chat a little bit about Logic Pro X's Amp Designer. Now, what is it? It is a digital collection of amplifiers from many, many manufacturers. They won't list them exactly, but they kind of look like them, so you can say, all oh, right, well, that's a Fender amp, that's a Boogie amp, that's a Marshall amp, etc., like that. It also not only gives you the selection of amplifiers, it also gives you selection of cabinets and mic and mic placement options, plus your individual stomp boxes. So there's quite a big range. So if you're just getting into electric guitar and you're going, I wanna make some music, go and plug it in and make some nice cool sounds. So where do we find it? Now I'm gonna be using Logic today, so I'll show you where it is in Logic, but it's gonna look very similar to GarageBand because the two kind of do look similar. So in uh, my main window, I'm gonna click this plus and I bring up guitar and bass. When I click create, there it is, it's done for us. It's simple, it's very quick. We have all the outputs going to the relevant things. Now. I have set up a little bit of a tone here. It's actually just using a preset of Britain Clean. Now you can see that in the library here. It's exactly what I'm using. If you want me to change it off, there we go. It's exactly the same as it will be in your machine. I'm not using anything different. So I've got my guitar set up. Let's have a look and see what Britain Clean sounds like. Pick. <laughs> I'm using a Variax 500 here, which is emulating a Les Paul tone in the bridge position. If I change to the neck position. There we go. We've got nice reverbs. We've got a nice little bit of break up on the amp. Let's take a look at the amp designer. So, to check out where the amp designer is, all we need to do is either double click the icon or push B. And if you push B, unless you've changed your key commands, we'll bring up your smart controls at the bottom for that particular pre-selected track. Now, on the right hand side of the smart controls are these three icons. We have the tuner, the pedal board, and the amp designer. Now the tuner, obviously very important, if you're not tuning your guitar up, just put your guitar down. I'm not interested. Tune your guitars up, please. Pedal board. We have a nice, simple drag and drop. This is your library of pedals that are available. If we take this double dragon, you drag and drop. There we go. You turn them on and off by the normal way that you would if you were playing with it on the floor. Okay. Uh, select it and push and delete if you want to remove it. Uh, these two pedals are not currently active. Um, but they're part of the default that's in there. We've got a little bit of a treble high drive booster pedal and a compressor, so we can activate those later if we wish. We're not going to right now. I'm gonna go back to the amp designer, this third icon. And uh, as you can see, what we have brought up is an image that reminds me of a Vox AC30. Um, from the selection of amplifiers that we have in this amp drop-down selection list, we can go all the way from Fender tones, all the way through various different Fender tones, all the way up to boogies and Amer uh, sort of British martial heads. Uh, and there's, as we get down towards the bottom, it starts to get more high gain, a little bit more metal orientated. So we've got something there that's a little bit like a diesel amp or a, a Soldano. You'll notice that the various voicings are basically cleaner amps at the top going all the way through. So all cool. If we go back to, let's say, a, uh, a vintage amp, we've got the cabinet simulation as well. Now the cabinet simulation that we have here gives you everything from a 1x8 all the way up to a 4x12 and various different manufacture variations. So we can have a vintage, a modern 4x12, we can have an American 4x12. They all have slightly different characteristics. So to match the two up, we're going to go with a vintage head and a modern 4x12, why not? Both British. And then over on the right hand side here, we can see that the image has changed. So. When I roll the mouse over the top of the image of the microphone and the cabinet, we can see this extra screen appears. Now, this little white dot that we have here allows me to change the placement of the microphone. And depending on which microphone you're using and its placement is going to give you a different response to your overall sound. So its placement 
is kind of important and having the options from sort of AKG C414s all the way SM57s, your standard, you know, most famous guitar recording microphone, 609s, etc. from Sennheiser, you've got a nice selection of about seven mics in there and all of the options are going to give you some real cool tones. The amplifier options that we have down here, your standard what appear on the amp themselves, except you get some extra bits because we're in the digital world. With the EQ selection, if you go over the top of the EQ, you can choose the different voicings, the EQ options you have. Plus with the reverbs, you can choose different types of warmth in your reverbs. And you get some extra bits for your effects, which will work in your uh, sort of channel strip chain. You can vary those a little bit later. I don't want to get into those right now. Now I'm going to just reset everything back to the default. So I'm going to click that back onto Brit and clean. And you can see that we are now back into that Vox uh, amp, Vox cabinet, and we've got the 121 mic running on it. So let's check what that sounds like. So I'm going to be using a Line 6 Variax 500 on a Les Paul tone. And I'm going to be using the tones in the bridge. No, yeah, in the, yeah, in the bridge pickup. <laughs> Reverb's are quite swell, so I'm going to turn the reverb off. Now, if you want to go through that selection of amplifiers that you have in this list, your pedals will stay the same. But if you want to change the combination of everything, you can create your presets in your library and you'll see how they are changing everything in there. If we look at this chicken picking, etc., and I click on the pedals, we can see the pedals have changed. If I click a different one, you can see the pedals change again. Everything is always going to be that little bit different. Some interesting voices can be achieved using this whole rig and I really, really like it, except the high gain tones. In fact, any gain tone. The low crunchy stuff, it kind of gets away with, but unfortunately, when you start to get to the, the high gain tones, for me, it starts to go a bit wrong. It's personal preference. It's not a sound that I, I like, um, and I would prefer to use a real mic and mic it or run it into a, uh, a cabinet simulator that is an outboard package. But this this unit is free and it might be all you have. So it's pretty cool for what it can do. I actually think it's really, really powerful. It's just the distortion stuff. So if I cannot let it do distortion, then I'm happy. All right. So how could we do distortion otherwise? Well, what about using pedals in the real world? Now, down here on my desk, I've got a Blackstar HT dual pedal, and uh, it's a valve-driven overdrive pedal, and uh, it's nice and warm. I use it in my normal rig, so why not just stick it in front of these amps and see what happens? Well, that's the best way, in my opinion, of making drive tones. To try and mic up an amplifier and get everything working with that. You've got expensive mics, you've got loud noise, so you probably have to do some sort of sound deadening, etc. Otherwise you're gonna annoy your neighbors. Um, it's just, if you're in a flat, it's not gonna be possible without spending a fortune. So this kind of option is not a bad solution. So let's, let's go and take a look at the amps, okay? Now, how I would prefer to use this pedal is to not actually use an amp simulator. I want to use the cabinet simulator and I want to use the mic simulator, but I don't want to use the amp simulator. So what I'm going to do is from the amp choice, right at the bottom, there's this transparent preamp, which is really, really nice. So here we go. This is with the British 2x12 and the 121 settings from the, the preset of Britain Clean, but this is now just using the transparent preamp. It has actually carried over the EQ settings as well when you do it this way. So that could be a pro, it could be a, a sort of, it might not be the best voicings for the new amplifier you choose when it sounded great on the other one, but here we go. So. 
That is the clean sound that's available through the transparent preamp. Now, depending on what pickup you're going to be running. So using a strap, it's obviously going to be that little bit cleaner. Back to the Les Paul. Now, what I want to try is using the different cabinets for the choice that I would buy in the real world. So if I was going to go and buy a cabinet, I'd probably try and buy a boogie pack cabinet, etc. And I'd probably make that with a 57 or uh, a Sennheiser 609. And so just by changing those options, we've got the transparent preamp through the American 4 12 which is based on a boogie. Uh, we've got the 609 microphone in front of it. So. Sounds quite nice. Now I'm going to get rid of that reverb just by flicking that little switch there. So now let's put the real world pedal on for drive. So I'm going to, back to my bridge pickup and I'm going on to channel one of my drive pedal. Now I prefer that kind of tone. If I want a high gain tone, I got my channel two where I've got the gain really, really cranked up. So the voices that you can get with your real world drive pedals are gonna fix all the distortion issues and then you can still use all the amps and the EQ voicings as you wish. So you actually get a massive range of tone. There is one drawback though. If you like reamping, and if you don't know what reamping is, I'm gonna do another video in the future, which will explain all of it. But if you know what reamping is and you want to be able to change your amps later, if you record the real world drive pedal, you can't take that tone off. So you'd have to start looking at capturing the signal from a guitar, and then outputting that signal from your interface back into a pedal and then running it back in again. Now that means you're getting into reamp boxes, you've got into slightly more technical interfaces. So it's, it's a possibility, um, but uh, yeah, it's if you're happy with fixing that sound in of the drive and then varying the amps afterwards, then fine, that's all cool. But it's, uh, it's got its drawbacks, but it might fix the fact that the drive tones in the amp designers don't sound pretty, but that's personal taste. It might do exactly what you want, and if it does, go and use it. Go and make music. More music needs to be made. Enjoy, have some fun, and let's hear what you do in the future. It'd be great to hear from you guys. I've been Mark from Safrock Studios. Please remember to subscribe, give a thumbs up, like the video, it all helps. Safrockstudios.com is the website. See you later.